Hello, and now we're back to mill lab number five. We're actually going to call this mill lab number 5A. Uh, recap real quick in the first milling lab there, or this program that I have over here. We actually just milled this pocket out. Now, this is a metric print. Again, I want to point that out. It's over here. Just because it says metric, most prints won't. Uh, the two place decimals should be usually what you look for because a three, three place decimals in a metric print is a very small amount. I visited that last time. I'm not going to visit it this time. Uh, so we milled this pocket out. We did it in three passes. Uh, the first pass was five millimeters deep. And we, right up here, here over here, excuse me, click. <laughs> oh, yes, how, how great. I'm going to have to scroll that back. There we go. Okay, so the first pass over here was... Uh, and so five millimeters deep and we did complete circles and then we made another pass leaving 15,000 stock again all this is in metric then and there were by the way in both of these passes okay we're using D01 which is a 19.81 millimeter end mill which is actually larger than the end mill we'd be using we'd be using a 19.05 so in these first passes right here okay what we did was we leave stock in Z on the bottom for a finished pass and we left stock on the sides okay so we did all that and that worked out pretty good uh, I have got camotics working. I'm going to show you a little bit about that in an additional video. Uh, that'll be something if you want to watch. You don't have to. I don't want to give you too much stuff at one time. So what are we going to do now? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and drill these holes. All right. Now, I'm going to go away from this. A uh, couple things that I you might want to write down or at least uh, memorize is one, these holes are going to be 35 millimeters deep. All right. That's right, 35 millimeters deep from the top of the part. All right, now one of the things that I don't, that <laughs> is not on this print, and I don't know why, but anyway, is the diameter of these holes. So let's say uh, for practical purposes, we're going to make the diameter of these holes will be 12.7 uh, millimeters. And if you look at that, that's a half inch drill. Okay. Now, so we're going to center drill and then we're going to step drill, which means we're going to just use any size drill to uh, remove stock. And then we're going to finally end up with a 12.7 millimeter drill. Uh, we'll probably countersink too, because once you get the whole locations down, it's, an, it's just another matter of copy and paste into this program. So I've got this one labeled as Mill Lab 5A, as I already said, and this is all the same stuff that was in Mill Lab 5, except I don't have the uh, M30 in here, because we're going to start again. So what we're going to do now is go away from this print. And you're going, why? Well, because if you've noticed, there are no actual hole locations. You don't see any dimensions. Now, I've get, actually, if you know anything about trigonometry, since X0 and Y0 is in the center of this, Z0, of course, is on the top, you could come out with this real simple. It's a simple little formula. I'll tell it to you right now. You just take the radius of the bolt hole circle. So the diameter of the bolt hole circle right here, that's the diameter of the bolt hole circle. The circle the bolt holes are on, we call that a bolt hole circle, is 75. So the radius is half of that. So half of 75 is what? Anybody? Well, let's double check just in case. 75 divided by 2 equals, oh, it's 37.5. So the radius of this bolt hole circle is 37.5. I'm going to write that down, 37.5. You don't have to store it or anything. But how you would come up with these locations is pretty simple like this. Well, we got 12 holes equally spaced. So how many degrees are each hole apart? All right? how many degrees? Well, there's 360 degrees in a full circle, right? I'm going to clear this out. 360 degrees in a full circle. So I'm going to take 360. I'm going to divide that by 12, which equals that. Okay. So each one of these holes, it's 30 degrees from there to there. So it's 60 degrees from there to there. 30 degrees from there to there. You get the idea, right? Okay. Now, so all you have to do is we would do a little trigonometry. Now I've already got this done, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it later on. We're going to do some more trig. But 
let's see if we can get this oh this is going to be great because i haven't used this calculator very much in the scientific mode so view scientific oh great now it's a great big monster thing okay so i can tell you what the way to find out how far over in x it is from x0 to like hole 2 and the way to how find up how far it is in y so over in x up in y is simply we're going to take the sine of the angle times okay the radius and the cosine of the angle times the radius that's what we're going to do so let's just do that we know the radius is 37.5 i already said that we can actually probably just stick that in uh, uh, 37.5 and put in memory store there we got it in memory because that's our radius so we're going to use that so we already know because i took 360 degrees divided it by 12 because 12 holes equally spaced and i got 30 degrees so i'm going to take the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine or excuse me i'm going to take the sine of 30 degrees boy that was fun i'm going to take the sine of 30 degrees and i'm going to multiply it times the radius now that's going to give me one movement. So let's just try that real quick here. And I'm not, again, I haven't learned this this too much. So let's go sine. Here, let me see, 30 degrees, and then we hit sine. That's exactly right. I do know the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5, so that's how that works. So the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5, and then I'm going to multiply it times memory recall, which is the radius, and that's going to equal one leg, 18.75. Now, which one of that is? Well, this is 100 from there to there. So I'm going to guess that's my y. So I mean, I'm going to have to go up. Or no, I mean, that's it's going to be x. Well, let's just try something else, OK? So 18.75, I don't have multiple memories, I don't think, on this particular calculator. I don't use this calculator when I'm at, I use a TI-85. <laughs> you should too. Okay, so I'm going to put 18.75 right down on a piece of paper here. So let's try cosine. Okay, I'm going to clear that out because when you hit cosine, it just gives you the cosine or whatever's last in there. So that's how some work, some don't work that way. So 30 degrees and hit cosine. Okay, so that, yep, at point 0.8, I do know that too. That is that, right? Times, again, the radius, which is in memory recall, equals. So that's 32.47. So 32.47. We're going to round everything to two places, all right? If you want to say 4.8, I'll say 4.8. Okay, that'll make it a little more accurate. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that again. So let's just go back back to view, back to standard, because this is where you're at. So again, to come up with this, simple. Sine of the angle between the holes times the radius of the bolt hole circle, and the cosine of the angle between the holes times the radius of the bolt hole circle. That's it. Now, I've already got the radius of the bolt hole circle in there. Let's clear, memory clear, clear that out of there. We'll do the whole thing again. Excuse me. All right, so... How do we find out? We have 12 holes, and there's 360 degrees in full circle. So 360 divided by 12 equals 30 degrees. So there, it's 30 degrees. All right? We know that each one of those holes is 30 degrees apart. All right, so let's clear that. The next thing we have to do is find out what the uh, radius of the bolt hole circle. And it's the radius, not the diameter. Most Sometimes they'll give you the diameter of the bolt hole circle. Sometimes they give you the radius. It, in this case, it's 75. So if I take 75 divided by 2, that equals 37.5. That's my radius. I'm going to store that because I'm going to use that again. I can clear it back out right now. So all I have to do is take the sign. So now let's go back into view, go into scientific, all of your calculations. Believe it or not, you have a scientific calculator right here. So I'm going to put in 30, and I'm going to hit the sign, and that should be 0.5. That's what it was before. Then I'm going to multiply it times my radius, which is in my memory recall, and that equals, should be 18.75. I'm double-checking, too, by the way. Okay, so let's clear that out. And then let's take, put in 30 again, and multiply it, okay, times, uh, Excuse me. Uh, let's not do that at all. Let's see if I can go back one. You know, clear E. Now, I'll uh, just clear. Start over. 30 degrees, I had to hit cosine, right? And then multiply that times my memory recall equals. Okay. 32.48 is what we decided. Now, what that means is from the center up and the center over, 
from here to there in X it's going to be 18.75 from here up is going to be 32.47 whole one whole four whole let me see seven yeah and whole, well, I guess I can I can definitely zoom in here let's see if we might as well just do that I'll zoom in there we go well you can't read it <laughs> of course you can one two three four five six seven holes one seven four and eight nine and ten are given to you all right now what I've got here is I've already got some this something done so let me do something real quick here rotate the view we're gonna go back clock counterclockwise you're going why did you do that also I'm gonna go back to 75 percent and I'm gonna bring this up because I have look at this I've already done all these calculations for you so normally I wouldn't I showed you how to do this I'm gonna clear this all out of here clear my memory go back to standard okay Put that puppy dog down there someplace since we have our whole locations right here it's a simple matter now you're gonna have you you're gonna have to uh, copy you can copy uh, you can calculate them up remember it's simple the ang the angle between the hole okay first off you find that how many degrees between each of the holes? If they're equally spaced, take 360 degrees, divide it by the number of holes. That'll give you the angle. Then you take the sine of that angle times the radius of the bullet hole circle. That'll give you one dimension. Then take the cosine of that angle times the radius of the bullet hole circle. That'll give you other dimension. Usually it's fairly obvious which is which because either one's going to be really short like on hole number two is exactly what actually see I, I didn't round that I kept it at 47 so we're gonna go with 32.47 instead of 32.48 but those are the two I've got them right there for you all right so enough of that you're going yes please all right so let's go to another line here let's get us some uh, some stuff here bring this up here because we know we're all done with all of that so we will re, we will resequence because we are going to be copying and pasting. We always will copy and paste anytime it's possible. All right. So what do we want to do here? Well, we got line N40. I'm going to open up a line there. N540, excuse me. And I'm going to go back up here because we got to do a tool change. So I'm going to go back up in here and I'm going to grab all of this right here. From N10, my safety line, all of that right there. I'm going to copy it. Don't cut it. <laughs> You'll ruin your program. Bring it back down. Bring her back over. And actually, that was so flurious, wasn't it? You do this live and see if you don't make any mistakes. All right. Now, that is very interesting. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay. Here we go. So, one of the things that we did before, a couple things. We got this right here, and I said, well, okay. We got it home in a tool change position. You know, I am going to put now N540 here. You're going to put an M05. That'll shut. Okay. That is going to shut the spindle off. All right. New line, N550. Then we're going to put an M01 there. Now that's an optional stop. And an optional stop means we turn a button on the control, we push it, you either push it and it's on, if you push it or it's off, it's called a toggle. M01 is an optional stop. If you have the M01 button pushed, or the optional stop button pushed, when it hits, when the control reads an M01 right here, it will stop until you hit cycle start again. Okay? It's a good thing to put in there. So I'm going to put that right there. Now, for all practical purposes, we could actually do this. Enter. Okay, let me try this here. And I'm going to actually add me another line by hitting enter. And then I'm going to delete this line right here. Delete. Yeah, I like that. So we're going to call this our tool change. So let's work on our tool change block first. All of this is going to stay the same. It's always a good idea to put that in there. Always put that in there. Just copy this. We're going to go to tool 2, so change it to tool 2. All right. Remember your H number also has to be that has to be changed. Now we also have to change our spindle speed. So we're going to use a number four center drill for this. All right. So I'm going to go right up here. I'm going to change that to number four center drill. And just uh, number 
for CD. That's all I'm going to put in there. And uh, CD. There we go. Control S if you haven't done that. A good time to do it. All right. So generally speaking, let's just run at 1250 RPM. That works in almost every situation. Okay. This is all going to be fine. That HO2 is fine. So we've got our tool change all, all done right here. All right, now we're going to resequence numbers and stuff, so don't worry about that. Control S if you haven't done that. All right, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start doing our holes. Now, since over here, I've given you the coordinates. I'm not always going to give them to you later on. We're going to go back over some trig, and I'll have some trig problems and things like that, especially bolt hole circles. It's a pretty common trigonometry. Uh, honest to God, you need to take some trig if you're going to be a CNC programmer. All right, you just do. Trigonometry is not that hard. It's an old, old math. Everybody thinks, oh my God, it's new math. No, it's not. It's over 3,000 years old. Uh, Algebra is even older than that. <laughs> the Greeks come up with uh, trigonometry. Believe it or not, the Arabs get the nod for algebra. Yeah, these are Arabic numerals. They also get the nod for that little thing right there, zero. That's right. The Arabics come up with zero. So there you go. That's the truth. So those things are not new math. They're very, very old, very old. All right, so let's get back to this. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to just start right here. At, since I've got that, I'm ready to go ahead. I'm going to open up a line by hitting Enter there and hitting a bunch of Enters again just to give me some more. Get this up here. All right, so we got our tool changed. Let's make sure we're tool 2. we got our spindle speed going. we got HO2. That's the only change you have to make up there. Everything else should stay the same. Now you see the beauty of the G80. We put the G80 there in case we had a can cycle where we didn't cancel it. We would definitely cancel it here. This also gives you the ability to like just go. You can search in the program while you're running the part and go down here and run just tool number two instead of waiting for tool number one all to run. Let's say you got through the shift and all you had to do is time to mill the pocket. Stopped it. Next time, what are you going to do? Mill the pocket all again? You've already milled it. No, you're going to go down, search for tool 2 or this second MO1. Go down here and start this program right from here, and it'll run. You don't have to remill that pocket. So do this. Always do this. All your tool changes. They're always going to look like that. Okay? Don't forget that MO5 right there. That can be pretty important. Some controls you don't need it. Some of you do. I'm just going to put it in there. It doesn't hurt. A lot of them are G28 in some cases has a built-in spindle stop some of them it doesn't it, it, it's a setting you can change it uh, there's two things in a cnc control settings and parameters settings you can change parameters you shouldn't be having you shouldn't be messing with parameters at all all right so like i said i'm gonna get down here to this line right here let's go in 60 just keep it in nice shape so what i want to do well the first thing i want to do is i'm going to wrap it into this first hole position so that's hole number one, which was X0 and Y is 37.5, because that's half of that bolt hole circle. This whole bolt hole circle was a 75 millimeter diameter, so half of that's 37.5. Hole one was right at X0, and that's it. Those are the coordinates of hole number one. So I'm going to go X0 point. Don't forget that, please. And space Y 37.5. All right. Now, that's moving it into position. But we also want to do something else because right now we're up here at we're up at machine home so let's bring z to 2.54 remember that's the metric equivalency of a hundred thousandths and we might as well turn the coolant on too okay control s if you haven't done that new line in 70. all right now we're going to use a g81 because that's a nice simple little g uh uh, M and G code. It's a can cycle, which is just going to make things easier. We've already done it once before. We're, we did it in the last lab. We're going to do it a lot of labs. So G81. The next thing you want to do is tell how deep to go. Z minus. Well, let me see. Normally, I take it about 3 /16, So we got to convert it. You can't put in 0.1875. So you got to go like this. Go 0.18. Well, let me show you the whole thing. 3 divided by 16. Get the decimal clip. It's equals that. Okay, then we're going to convert it to metric, so we do what? We multiply it by the, the magic number. And what is that? You should have said 25.4. This should be etched in your brain. There's a lot of things that, so right there, that's 3 sixteenths. That's, so it's 4.7625 millimeters is 3 sixteenths. I don't need to be that accurate. I'm going to copy it. Going to go over here. 
paste and I'm gonna go back two places that's deep enough okay now the other thing that we need in a G81 okay is we need an R plane now you can put this again the order that you put these in doesn't really matter it it matters if somebody's looking at it. I was always taught put the G the S then the R then the feed now the R plane is the same as this right here in other words that's where we're going to retract okay or is it the deal in this case all right if I leave my R plane at 2.54 it's going to wrap it to a hundred thousandths above the part every time it drills a hole well guess what we got a 10 millimeter deep pocket and so you're going to be drilling 10 millimeters of air if you do that that's right so how about this we want 10 minus 2.54 that'll put us a hundred thousandths at the bottom of our pocket so let's clear that 10 minus 2.54 equals that now that's going to be an R plane R plane is a retract plane now again what is a retract plane let me get that down here let me copy that a second I'm going to just go ahead and put it in here R and it's going to be a minus value excuse me that should be a capital R minus and I'm going to paste now what that's going to do is it's going to wrap it down to within a hundred thousandths of the bottom of the pocket so we're not cutting 10 millimeters of air nobody's going to pay you to cut air people that's all there is to it because nobody else will do it I'm not going to cut air if you want to get cut air and then try to charge the customer for that and they go well why is Randall part so much cheaper than yours because Randall don't cut air that's why so deal with it don't cut air keep that R plane right there okay the next thing we need is just simply a feed now I'm gonna tell you 2.5 inches per minute and if you put 2.5 that'll not be the right answer so let's do a little bit of calculating here we got to convert 2.5 right to metric 63.5 what a surprise that's what it was before <laughs> okay okay I'll clear that out and we'll uh, get the get that down there so my F remember there's no such thing as a G81 without an F so F is 63.5 okay control S now that activates my can cycle this is a canned C-Y-C-L-E can drilling yep and of course let me do this because you know all right control S now this is a standard drilling cycle all it will do it will go down to I got 4.76 that's wrong I'm gonna change that right now because I don't want I've already got 10 this has got to go deeper than that if it only goes 4.76 this would actually have drilled up I gotta had add 10 to it well that's a simple thing to do there we go yeah so let's go back over that again I know that's kind of confusing G81 this is going 14.76 deep that's because oh no no that's not right nope that is right because it's gonna wrap it down to the R plane Yep, it is 14 boy I'm having a hard time with that I haven't done the pocket thing in a while so give me a break here yeah 14.76 is correct because that's how deep Z is gonna go regardless the R plane is gonna be different so it's gonna drill 14.76 so what it's gonna do is it's gonna go 4.76 which is 3 16 deeper past that 10 we had 10 millimeter deep pocket remember so now we're gonna go 4.76 into that pocket All right so you can't shift your Z zero or anything like that don't try to do it so that's how deep it's going to drill 14.76 millimeters it's going to now our plane of minus and yes that has to be a minus if you don't it'll stop 7.646 millimeters above the part and drill a whole bunch of air you'll see it right away and then we got our feed remember always feed so that's your standard can cycle right there all right let's go in 80 now this stuff when you do it live I can edit some of that out I'll try and edit some of it out I may not I'll just leave it alone everybody makes mistakes there's nobody that doesn't all right so here's the neat part after this all we have to do is put in these coordinates over here we don't have to put anything else the can cycle will do it all for us 
Now, oh, X, I wish I could copy and paste that, but I can't. 18.75, right? Y, don't forget your X and Y, 32.47. Okay, that's it. New line. And I'm at for num number, it, you'll notice that the numbers just alternate back and forth. That is pretty standard for whole pockets. So X, you could just, you could copy this and paste it down in there if you wanted to. But I'm not going to because I find that the more I copy and paste, the more people get lost. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go up over here because this was hole one. This is hole two. I'm at hole three. So it's 32.47. And Y is going to be, in this case, 18.75. Okay? Because that's where that hole's at. Yep, 18.75. Okay, in 100. Control S if you haven't done it. Okay, so now I'm ready to, for, you know what? This probably won't hurt. I'm going to put this right here. That's hole number one. That's hole number two. This is hole number three. Okay, Control S. That, that'll help you out a little bit. Keep it in line there. So I'm ready for hole four. Hole four is 37.5, so it's X is 37.5, and Y is going to be 0. I told you some of these, not YY, but 0, and don't forget the decimal point. Okay, let's see if I can't, uh, if I hit tab, what will this do? Let's see where that'll put me. Nope. Nope. All right. <laughs> Hole four, control S, so there's hole four, new line. In 110 zero, space, X is gonna be, so I'm ready for hole number five, not X, X, X. Well, how did I hit W? I have no idea I hit W. Okay, so I'm hole five, X is 32.47, and Y is going to be, I'm a hole five, minus, it's definitely a minus because remember the x0 and y0 is in the center part, so you're going to have some negative moves. And that's going to be hole number five. Let's see if that works. No, it did not. Not sure how that happened. Always learning. Yeah, that's what I thought. Control S. New line. Okay, X. Okay, so I'm at, we're ready for hole number six. X is 18.75. You could start copying this stuff. As a matter of fact, you know what? Now that you see how I'm going to write that down and how I'm doing it off here, you could do this. This is perfectly acceptable. As a matter of fact, if you know it, you look over at hole five. I'm um, hole six, 18.75. I come up here, look at this. See? Copy. Now, for some people, that's just too too confusing. I just know that. Y is going to be minus 32.47. Well, right here is that, so I can copy that. So you can copy and paste a lot of stuff, but there is a problem with this right here. That is definitely a minus. See, whole 6, 32, yep, minus. Put that in there. Control S. All right, and uh, obviously now I'm losing. Let's tab these over. That's hole six. Control S if you haven't done that, of course. And then N 130. So this is hole seven. X is zero. I can actually put zero faster than I can copy and paste it. I know that. And uh, Y is minus 37.5. And tab, tab, and let's go seven. Control S, new line, N 140, space, so this is hole 8, hole 8, again I could paste, hole 8, this time X is minus 18.7, so I'm just going to do this, copy, paste, put a minus there, 
What's y? Well, y is going to be minus 32.47. I already got that right here, so y type it. Remember, the more you type, the more chances you have of making the wrong keystroke, like you've seen me do so many times. <sighs> Boy, I am moving too fast. That's the problem. I need to slow down. I'm going to add some more lines here to bring this up so you can see what's going on. Okay, so here we go. N 150. Now, I know I'm going to resequence it. Control S. Uh, I'm ready for whole nine. At this point, let me see, whole nine, X is going to be minus 32.475. So I'll put X and I'll, no, I'll just copy this. This is what I'm going to do. Copy. Backspace, get rid of that. Paste. I'm going to put a minus right there. Now, trust me, people that you see program real fast, you go, how'd they get that done so fast? This is how they do it. And... This is whole nine. Yep, and it's minus eighteen point. Uh oh, look at here. No y. That would have that would have made it. I would have got an error. Okay. And those are the kind of errors that once you get once you get really good at this, is the ones you'll make. <laughs> the stupid ones. Control S. So that was nine here. Let me tab this over. Got that right that time. Control S. Okay, so I'm at ready for hole 10. Hole 10 is uh, X minus 37.5. So I'm going to go up. I don't want that. I want just this. Copy. Paste. Put a minus there. Okay. And what is Y? Well, what do you know? Y is 0. This is 0 point. Control S. And I will tab and make that. Control S again. Okay, so in 170. Uh, okay, in 170. So we're ready for hole 11. X is minus hole 11. X is minus 32.47. Got it right here, so I'm just going to copy. Now, Later on, when you're doing this, these are called coordinate charts. And a lot of times I make these up any time I have multiple numbers that I have to use. It just saves you a lot of time, and especially if you can copy and paste out of them, you know. But some people don't use them, you know. So again, we're for hole 11. Uh, that's 18.75. There's a Y 18.75. I don't want that right there. I, I want all of that. Copy. Paste. Tab this over. No tab. There we go. Believe it or not, that symbol is called a pipe. Weird. I don't know why, but that's what it's called. Control S, new line. And remember, we're going to resequence this. Okay. So I'm a. I'm ready for hole 12, which is the last hole. So I got, I got a minus 18.75 and X. Well, I can do this. All hey, right, here. Here's an X already. Copy paste put a minus there now if you're not sure why it's minus I'm gonna go back and show you why it's minus you're going why is that minus I don't understand I'll show you here in a minute okay and then 32.47 for y and let's see I certainly have a y that has a 30 here we go right here and copy and let's paste it let's tab that over Good. All right, control S. Now, let's talk about that. Let's go back. I have to do this because this, these things aren't set up for, these PDFs are sent up, they be handed out, uh, not, not shown on the internet. So I have to go view, I have to rotate the view clockwise. I'm going, why did you have to do that? Well, it's because guess what? The print right there, see? The print itself does not present it presents horizontally so I have to rotate it now let's go ahead and let's go to like 150 or something here 125 yeah that's good come on up come on over okay since x0 and y0 is in the center of the part anything on this side of x0 is going to be a positive value you don't have to put pluses in there don't ever put pluses in your program I, there should never be a plus any place in there, ever, ever. 
It's assumed. You don't have to put it in there. Anything on this side of x0 is negative. So that's why some of these x values, that's a negative x value, that's a negative, that would have been a negative, that would have been a negative, that would have been a negative. Okay, this was a positive x value, this was positive, this was positive, this was a positive x value, that was positive. That's x0, that's x0, they're given to you. That's y0, y0 x negative 37 point that's x i can tell you what the coordinate of that is that's x minus 37.5 y0 this is x positive 37.5 y0 this is x0 y 37.5 and this one is x 0 y minus 37.5 that's why we got the minus signs in there because remember everything's coming from the center of the part so we're working in what we call all four quadrants and it's like this this is all in this quadrant from here to here, think of this as a piece of pie, all your movements are going to be positive, x and y. In this quadrant, from here to here, x is going to be positive, y is going to be negative. In this quadrant, from here to here, this piece of pie, x and y are both going to be negative. In this quadrant, from here to there, x is negative, y is positive. Okay. Now, what do we need next? Well, we need to cancel our can cycle right now okay that's right because we've drilled our holes so in 190 and g80 and it is best especially when you're starting out to just let that g80 set there all by itself on a line it won't hurt control s okay you don't need to do anything else we got a g80 now let's see what we did up here when we did our tool change we did our g28 well that's a good idea because we're going to do a tool change so 200 and I can just, here's the cool thing about this, at this point, I can just copy these two right here. Go right down here, I'll just paste, don't care about the sequence numbers. See, that cancels the can cycle, I'm going to put that in there. Cancel can cycle, let's get that line out of there. Control S if you haven't done it. All right, that's very important. If you don't put that G80 there, the very next move this machine makes, it'll go home. It'll go home. First, Z's going to go up 101.6, which is 4 inches, 101.6 millimeters, which is 4 inches. And then it'll try to drill a hole right there. It'll stop and it'll come, it'll wrap it down as fast as the machine can go to... And if your hand happens to be in the way or whatever is in the way, it's going to break that drill bit. It's going to knock things out for the love of God. Do not forget your G80. Do not forget your G80. Yeah, do not forget your G80. Okay. If you do, bad things happen. And it's not my fault. It's your fault. So I'll put the spindle stop. We can put that on here. We didn't put it up there in the other one, but I even uh, went ahead and did a... Once again, I know how to spell spindle. Just so you know what a spindle stop is. And I'm going to cut, I'm going to, because I, normally I probably wouldn't do this, but I'm going to put it right here. Okay, spindle stop. And I'm also going to put this right here. Now you're going, wait a minute, that's not a spindle stop. You just called that a, what did I call it? I called it an optional stop. O P T I O. Ah. I O N A L S T O P. Yeah. And I didn't need to spell stop, did I? But I did anyway. Control S. There. Now, guess what? The G28 spindle stop. I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole tool change block again. Okay. Copy. Go back over here. And I'm going to open up a line by hitting enter, and I'm going to paste that sucker right here. Boom. I'll bring it back, and let's see what we got. Okay, remember, we're going to re-sequence this. Control S if you haven't done that. That stays the same. That stays the same. Up to tool three. We're going to go to tool three. I told you we were going to step drill this. So step drills are just drills that get material out of the way. It's not a good idea to try and drill a half-inch hole with a half inch drill right off the bat. You want to remove some stock, just like we always, we rough. So let's say on this one, let's quarter inch will be fine. It's not gonna be a number quarter inch, but how about just a 
quarter inch D-R-I-L-L, quarter inch drill. Okay, control S if you haven't done that. Our H number has to match her, right? Always has to do that. If you don't, you'll get an error. It'll tell you that. It'll stop and go H number doesn't match T number, something like that, or T number doesn't match H number. Okay, our RPM is incorrect. Actually, it's probably pretty close, but we got to calculate RPM. So what did I tell you the cutting speed was? Well, I did on the last one was 100. I'll remind you that. So 100 times the constant 3.82 equals this divided by 0.25. That's the decimal equivalency of a quarter of an inch. And we're going to run, told you it's close. Let's copy that, copy. Look at this. Paste, boom, control S. Hey, we got our tool change done. That's right. All of this is good. All of that is good. That's good stuff. All right. Now that we've got our tool change and we're getting ready, we're going to have to do some more copy and pasting because right here is where we drilled our holes. So I am going to go ahead and copy all of this. So I highlighted it. I copied it. I go back down here. And let me see. Yeah, we opened up a line. So we'll open up a line here by hitting enter. And I'm going to paste that right there. Paste. It always gets really weird. Control S if you haven't done it. Okay, what do we need to change here? Well, obviously, you can double check, but I'm pretty sure that all of these are right. Now, I'm going to run it to see, and it'll be obvious if it's not. But I think there's some things I need to change. Now, I'm leaving that R plane alone. Don't touch that R plane. Don't touch this. Okay? Mm -mm. Don't touch that. Okay? Now, there's some people would tell you to go ahead and rapid down to minus. You shouldn't have to do that. Just leave that R plane like it, this Z like it is. 100 thousandths, leave that R plane like it is. However, we are going 35 millimeters deep. Remember? Yep, that's how deep. 35 point. Don't forget the decimal point. You can forget the zero. Control S. The feed is not correct. Okay? That is not correct for a quarter inch drill. Okay, so let's go back and do a quarter inch drill feed. We'll clear this all out. So, for every... Okay, for every inch of eighth inch of drill diameter, we're going to use two thousandths of revolution feet. So this one's going to be kind of hard. So first off, how many eighths are in a quarter? I already know what it's two, but let's prove it. 0.25 divided by two eighth is a corner is 125 thousandths. So there we go. So real quick here, I know there's two eighths. So here's how we do that. I'll start all the way again. Go ahead and put 0.25 divided by the decimal equivalency of an eighth of an inch equals that. So there's two eighths and a quarter. Now, I told you, for every eighth inch of drill diameter, you're going to use two thousandths inch per revolution feed. So just multiply that times 0 0.002 equals four thousandths. Now, if you put four thousandths down here in that feed right now, copy and paste, you're going to go four thousandths a millimeter per revolution. Let's go that again. Four thousandths a millimeter per revolution. Okay, that's four microns every time the tool goes around once. Guess what? You're going to be standing there going, why isn't that thing moving? And then if you'll actually look at the registers long enough, the DRO is the digital readout. You'll see it move one. It, bottom line, you're going to be going, you're drilling very freaking slow. So we have to multiply this number times our RPM. That's how we do it. Times, so it's 1528, one. 528. Okay, now that's inches per minute. That's great, but that ain't right. See, we're working with fract with metrics, so y'all so now we have to multiply times 25.4 times 25.4, the magic number, and 155 will be just fine. 155. Don't forget the decimal point. <laughs> if you don't put that decimal point in there, it will see all kinds of weird stuff. Control S if you haven't done that. So let's see, we can go on the right depth, yep. We got the right R plane, yeah, that's still going to be uh, 100 thousandths off the down, because remember, we got a 10 millimeter deep pocket, so it's going to come down 100 thousandths here, then start drilling. Otherwise, you're going to be drilling a whole lot of air. And on two parts, nobody cares. All right, on 2,000 parts, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. Thousands of dollars, seriously. It can be more than that. All this other stuff is good. I don't have to change anything else. I had control S just again in case I forgot. But seriously, that's it. I just went ahead. Now, that was my quarter inch drill. That's all there is to it. Now, here's the beauty of it. I'm really going to take you. Now, 
we're just going to copy all of this. Okay? I'm copying every bit of it. Copy. I'm going to open up a line, and I'm going to paste it right here. Now, what do I need to change? Well, let's go back up into our tool change block first. Change this to tool 4, okay, which is not a quarter inch drill, which is going to be a 12.7. Oops. Okay, control S if you haven't done that. Now, how fast do we read? Well, that's, I'm going to show you real quick. Let's figure up our RPM. Or I'll, might as well change that H number too before we forget that. Control S. Okay, so we're looking at the RPM. Highlight that RPM anytime time you do this because this is the best way to do it. Go ahead, clear it out. <sighs> so, I'll tell you right now that 12.7, if you divide it by 25.4, you're going to get the, frac the English equivalent. That's a half inch drill. So, remember that. You can even put memory store if you want. I don't care. Cutting speed was 100, so let's go ahead and do this. So, 100 times 3.82 equals that. What do you know? Divided by memory recall equals, there, 764. Copy it. Remember the copy. And paste. Boom. Control S. Save it. There. Now, Let's see, let's make sure we got this going. We've got tool four. The only thing you have to change in any of these tool change blocks is just your tool number, your spindle speed, your tool description, and of course your H number. Okay, that's it. All right, so this time, let's see what else we got going on. We got a whole nother thing here. I'm gonna hit control S just in case I haven't. Uh, let's see, what do we got? So we're still going 35 millimeters deep. That R plane's good, the feed is not. The feed is not right, remember? So I'm going to calculate the feed again. One. Okay, so 0 0.5 divided by 0.125 equals 4 times, all right? Remember, for eight, there's 4 eighths and a half, and a half so times 0 0.002 equals 8. Time, and multiply that times your RPM. Our RPM was 764. I'm looking at my numbers, 765. I'll go 764. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply that times 25.4. Okay. Sometimes it does equal up that two thousandths per every eighth inch diameter. If the RPMs, sometimes you end up with the same feed. I did this time. So guess what? The feed is actually, and it does happen. I know you're going, that's bull crap, but it's true. So I'm leaving that alone. Don't forget the decimal point. At this point, you know what? I don't have to do anything here because I got the right Z depth. I got the right feed. The R plane's good. All my coordinates are good. I got it canceled. I've got the whole nine yards there. That right there should cancel everything. Now, I think we're going to countersink this too because there ain't no such thing as we don't drill holes in the machine world, okay, and not countersink them unless they're die openings. Never countersink a die opening. <laughs> if you're a die worker, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you don't know what I'm talking about, so don't worry about it. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm copying again. See? Look how my program is going to be really big. And copy. Let's open up a line. Put it here. Go paste. Hit Control S. All right, so this one, we're going to change the tool number five. Okay, that's going to be a... Ha Let me see here. Uh, it's going to have to be, I'm going to say, a 5 8 90 Oh, didn't need that, did I? That's a 5 8 90 degree countersink. That's what tool number 5 is. Let's go down here, make our H number 5, 2, control S if you haven't done that. All right. You could put a degree symbol there, but I don't know how to put a degree symbol in a notepad. All right. This speed, countersinks are run slow. I'm just going to run it 300. Feed, I think I'll go 2.5, which was, I believe, ended up being, well, let's do it again. So let's say I'm going to go 2.5 inches per minute. 
There is no rule on feeds on countersinks. Just generally, you run everything slow. So 2.5, all right, times 25.4. I'm converting it. I'm going to think I'm going to get 63 something here. 63.5, yeah, because that's how fast I run my center drill too, as far as feed goes. Copy. Get this out of the way here. So right here, well, that's my, that's my, uh, that's my 63.5, 300, yes, my feed right here. So I'm going to change my feed to 63, let me see, paste, 63.5, I got an extra point there, that will not work, control S. Now, if I go 35 millimeters deep, I've scrapped this part out. The airplane's fine, okay, the feed's fine. The RPM's fine. H number's fine. That's fine. I got all this good stuff going on up here. But 35 is not going to work. How deep do you take a countersink? Well, let's say, let's look at these holes. They're 12.5 millimeter, 12.7, which is a half an inch. So let's do this. Let's say I want 30 thousandths per side. So, eh, that's too big. Let's say 20. So that's 40. 20 thousandths per side chamfer. That means I'm going to have a chamfer 20 thousandths per side. So I'm going to double that. So that's 40. Okay. I'm going to add that to the diameter of the hole, which is, remember, that was a 12.7 millimeters there. So I'm going to have a 540 thousandths diameter countersink. Now, what does that mean? That's how a countersink is the tool that makes a part detail that's called a countersink. Just divide this by two. Remember, you can rewind this. So I'm going to take that 270 thousandths deep. Of course, I can't put 270 thousandths in there. I have to go ahead and do what? I have to convert it. So I'll do it up here times 25.4 equals, that's how deep I'm going, 6.858. So let's copy it. Go right up here. Leave the minus sign. Don't forget the minus. Leave that on there. Control S. Let me check all this. So this is how easy it is. Okay, so there we go. Yep, yep. Our plane is going to be the same all the time. It's never going to change. My feed is right. Two and a half inches per minute. My RPM is right. I got tool five. I got H5. Uh, this is going. That's all good. Good, good, good. No way. You know what? I am done with this. This part is what we call whooped. So zero ah randall can't believe you did that m30 control s and don't forget your percent sign seems like on one thing i actually did now why didn't you do it? there we go and control s at this particular point okay i got that done i'm gonna get rid of this because i don't need him anymore get out of here i am gonna open up predator editor Okay, bring this back up. Put your insertion point any place in here. Hit Control A. It'll look weird. Up oh, there's another percentage sign that I did not know about. Delete. Let's check this out. There's a whole bunch of blocks here that aren't no good. Remember ghost code? Let's see if I can even. We'll just leave them there. But remember, bottom line is keep going, keep going, keep going. All right. I'm going to hit, if I hit delete right here, delete, that's it, control S. Now watch this. Okay, so put your insertion point any place in there, hit control A. We're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it over here. Boom. This is quick. Now, process, resequence, we'll go by tens. Ah, oh, let's go by fives. Start at five, increment by five. So you can change that to any. Always leave spaces, though. You don't want to go one by one, okay, ever. Matter of fact, it'd probably say it doesn't recommend doing that. Okay. Then, Control-A to select. Copy again. Copy. Go back down here. Open this back up. Go over here and paste. And hit Control-S. And now I have uh, this thing right here. I'm going to go over here. Turn you off. I don't want you to. I don't know. I, I'm just using you for one thing. And that's resequencing. Here's my program. How many blocks do I have? Okay, went 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way down to... It's quite a long program, isn't it? Not the longest. Long, but not the longest. Question is, does it work? 
control s just in case I'm gonna close this sucker out now I'm gonna show you how to use uh, you know what it'll take too long to set it up in camotics I'll, I'll do that on another video so that you don't have to watch this any longer this has already probably gone on as long as you'd like it let's just use NC viewer which works pretty well you don't have to see with the uh, NC view with NC viewer I don't have to set up my tools in camotics I do anytime you're ready all right remember get rid of this control a hit delete and I think I still have this so I should just boom yep all right click the plot button I'm gonna move this out of the way boom <laughs> oh boy all right you can read the digital readout okay and I don't think this thing will let me do anything like coasting I'm gonna hit the rewind button <laughs> my goodness look at that it certainly looks different but it's not throwing me any errors I look at the top view you can see where your holes are at these is this is your bolt hole circle right there okay we should have 12 holes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 we do have 12 holes let's go back to home there we go if I run that let me see here I'm gonna go down to just the center drill where is the center drill start here option tool 5 oh my gosh I went way past it center drill would have been tool 2 wouldn't it yes it would have so I should be able to put it right here and run it okay there it's coming down see this is the center drill it's center drilling you don't get to see a lot I could set this up in camotics like I said and, and you'll get to see a whole lot more I should maybe clarify that you're going well yeah these are deeper than the look you want to look at the side view say of course they're deeper remember we're drilling 35 millimeters deep so see here's my I wrap it at a hundred thousandths above the part then there's my R plane which is a hundred thousandths above the bottom of the pocket and then it drilled from there on okay this is the center drill and then the other two drills drilled like that I'd be interested to see what that's uh Wow okay so let's go back again to tool number two yeah put it put my insertion point right there and run this and let's see it drill bet it'll just go to point to point see this is my center drill there's drilling the holes drilled all of them now here comes my uh, this is my quarter inch drill see it's drilling them 35 okay and here doing all those and then finally here comes my half inch drill okay yay it works what do you know all right, so one more video later on on how Camnotics works. All right? Okay, so I'll uh, see you at the next video.